it's uh, how we are doing science and climber inside cells, and all that can be useful for you. Um, <coughs> this is going to be the agenda. I'm not definitely not going to speak about all these points. Uh, I'm going to focus in first on the first five, and then we can explore the ones that are more interesting for you. What I would like it to be is like very practical. Um, I give my approach and my overview, and then you tell me specific problems that you might have. So just to have an understanding in the room, who is doing inside cells already? Cells over phone and, uh, and email. So all of your room. So I want to start by this. Uh, even before the first point, uh, we need to know where we want to go in order to create a, to establish a plan to arrive there. Uh, and in Climber, we had uh, this, this new chapter in our life. We had just closed investments, so we had to plan the future ahead. And what we thought is, OK, currently we have 26 paying clients, and we want to end the year with 144, uh, 54 clients, so which means uh, roughly um, 120 clients more. So how are we going to do this? We knew that until now we were doing only outbound. Outbound means we have a sales team reaching out to potential clients that never heard about us. So we grab the phone or we send an email, but in the other side of the line, the other side of the email, the guys never heard about Climber. So this is an outbound. And now we knew that we wanted to start building inbound as well. Okay, inbound, building all these mechanisms, SEO, content, whatever, to the guys uh, arriving in our web website or coming to us, and then we, we take it from there. So basically, and roughly, um, if we had 30,000 euros in sales, that means that if we wanted to get to 154 clients, and that would mean in terms of revenue, 30, um, 300,000 euros in sales, we would have to get 10 times more what we have in one year. And in terms of sales pipeline, if you had if you would have half million in sales pipeline, that means that we would at least have to, to have five times the pipeline. What is the pipeline for me? And please stop me if there's anything that I'm saying that doesn't make sense or you don't understand. Um, I, pipeline is a group of opportunities. Opportunities for me is a, a, a client, a lead, that uh, we believe we can close within the next six months. So we'll be working on it and we believe we can close it in the next six months. So pipeline is all these opportunities that we generated. Uh, in for the case, specific case of, of Climber means that we sat down with the client, uh, we run, uh, sat down, I mean, um, uh, remotely, but we, we called the client, we made a demo with client for 40 minutes, we identified the pains of the client, and that we can actually um, help him, and uh, that he has all the criteria to work, to, work, to, work, to work with us, meaning as well that he has the money to pay for it within the next six months, okay? So this group of opportunities, we call it pipeline. So we need to, to increase five times, multiply by five. Why multiply by five and not 10 as the sales? Because as we get better, we improve our processes, the closing, um, um, ge ge um, passing the client, I'll, I'll show you the, the, the each stage, but every stage we have leaks. So we have a client that when going from one stage to the other, he leaves the, 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 the cycle. Uh, so as we improve our, our processes, um, our sales pipeline becomes more, more, more fluid, um, we don't need to, to, to increase the sales pipeline the same way we need to increase the, the, the sales. But I will get there in the point. So basically, when we are speaking with our um, advisors, sales advisors, um, and investors, they said, okay, the best way to look into the future is to look into uh, historical data. And as you are a startup and the things are so different, um, the last three months were so different than the last six months, the best way to predict the future, so we know that we want to reach 154 clients in the future. but Let's look then into the last quarter of 2017. How many clients did we close in the last quarter of 2017? And we had closed five clients. Okay, so if we can duplicate, the, um, double that number in, in the first quarter of 2018, it means that we'll bring 10 new clients. 10 new clients made, uh, made uh, with the clients that we already have, 34. Okay, so if we can duplicate, uh, double, uh, this number for, for the last quarter because we improved the process, we bring in more people, um, the, the basically um, we optimize all the all, 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 all these sales process, so which, which means like we, we can close more. Uh, we can also roughly say that we can double the number, the, the quarter three, and we can um, at least increase 80% for the last quarter of the year. So this is a, an exercise that we did that, that I really suggest you to do it as well um, with your team. Um, with, your, with your companies. If you don't have it yet, and for those that are not doing inside sales, let's go into specific settings and see how we can build this. So, for, to do the backward planning, and, uh, and uh, the ones that uh, 
believe in the end of this presentation that inside sales might work for your startup and you want to do it and you, we can also speak later about this um, after 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 this event in Porto. you can come back to me if you have any questions but i think it's very clear what what it, what, what is in here so basically i, I defined um the main steps that we have to follow in order to to achieve this backward plan you have your goal that you want to achieve this goal is based on, on something that might make sense for you. If you ask, if you just close a seed round or, or angel round, and you, close, you want to close the series A in 12 months or 18 months, you need to, to know um, how much revenue or MRR or whatever metric you have for your company, how much metric, how much money you, you need to be making or how number of plans you need, to, you need to have. So you establish that number. How do you establish this number? If you don't know, ask an investor that is in the Series A or the stage um, just just uh, uh, above the one that you are now, what is needed for him to invest in you? And he will tell you, okay, I consider your, my investments when startups are in MRR, monthly recurring revenue of 25K, 25,000. Okay, then you, that means in terms of revenue, 300,000 euros um, a year, that means number of clients X for you, okay? Based on the annual contract value that your company has. So in this case, we have that based on the looking to the past, we know now how many clients we need to close each quarter. And then um, the, the, second, the second step is defining the stages that, you, that the client needs to, to, to pass until it becomes a client. Yes? What's SQL? I'll get that in a second. Okay. Um, so basically, in inside sales, means that we call a client and we will not never ever close uh, the client right there on the first call or the first email. That just simple doesn't happen, okay? Um, that's a, a dream that uh, we need to, to, to break and uh, wake up the entrepreneurs. Guys, that's not how, how it works. This is a sales machine and needs to be fully working. So let's see how the sales machine works. Basically, now Climber has all these stages. Climber is, the, is your company, all, have all these stages, but it was not like this in the beginning. So also, don't uh, don't uh, believe that uh, the first process that you'll put together will be the same that you'll have three months from now or six months from now because it will not. It will change, and that that's 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 absolutely fine. But at least you have something to start. So let's see how we do it in Clamber. Let's start by the beginning, and they just ask what is what is a S S S K L. S K L means sales qualified lead. Is a guy that. Uh, we, we identified, in our case, we work with hotels, and we work with independent hotels or independent chains with more than 40 rooms. And we are not working with uh, hotels in Indonesia. We are working with hotels in a geographic location, which for now is Europe. So a sales qualified lead for us is a hotel with more than 40 rooms located in, in Western Europe, and that uses uh, one of the, 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 the reservation systems that we need to integrate with. Because if they have another reservation system that we don't integrate with, we cannot collect the data, therefore our system doesn't work. Um, also, it means that the guy has the money to pay for, for a solution, has the interest, and I'm speaking with the right person, and I believe um, we can eventually close them, okay? So sales qualified lead is someone that we, we believe we can close. Is it clear so far? <coughs> So, so sales is, is it clear what, what it means? Okay. Then we, we, we have sales qualified leads. We might even have something before the sales qualified lead. We might have something that sometimes we call it raw contact or raw leads. A guy that came to us or we identified it, but he's not even yet qualified. We haven't, we haven't qualified means that someone called him to, and made him a, a series of questions to, to understand if he can work with them or not. And right there, we have to say yes or no. We don't want to work with this guy or not. And this is really important in the beginning of your filter, your, of your sales funnel, to, to identify what is the sales qualified lead and what's not. Because what's not, you have to exclude. You, can, you cannot lose time with clients or with prospects that they will not be reaching the end of, of the funnel. So as soon as you identify them, exclude them out of the sales funnel or keep on nurturing them. And we'll see now, later how to do it. So then the second st step, for us is to book a demo. So we just call the client, we, we qualify him, he's, he's, he's good to go, we, can, we believe he, he can be a, a, a guy that we can work later on. So the next step, we book a demo. A demo for us means that um, we send them all the instructions out to meet us um, online. We don't use Skype. Skype uh, for us gives a very bad image. Um, it looks like a very cheap startup. So we, we use, but this is my opinion, we use GoToMeeting or Zoom, which are tools, some of them are free, 
Um, and if, like, it's, it works exactly like a, like a screen sharing tool, which is really easy to use. So we set down with the client, the demo. We, we go through, um, in a 40 minutes conversation with the client, we go through um, uh, what kind of revenue management systems are they using, if they are using any, what kind of payments do they have, um, what are they looking to improve. So basic questions that you can all implement on your companies as well. What is the current situation? What, the, what is the problem? What solutions are you using? How do you like to improve? What's your expectations? So these are four main questions that, for, that work for any, any single company. And the sales guy knows how to, how to say these questions, okay? So demo booked, what's the end of the demo? The end, the, 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 the oh, oh, well, before that, we book the demo and then we run the demo. And it's running the demo that we go this 40 minutes. So in the end of the demo, we have, we have, we have a conclusion. Either the guy keeps going through the rest of the funnel, or he jumps out because he's not ready yet, he doesn't have the money, he doesn't have the PMS we can integrate, or, or perhaps he has, but he's planning to change it. Um, he's not the guy that makes the decision, doesn't have the money, or any other reason. But if we identify that we cannot work with them now, Again, we don't lose time. He goes out, and we keep them. We put them on the nurture, nurture pro program. I'll explain later. Okay. So if the guy, we can believe, we believe we can close them. He, he gets into the op. Op means opportunity. Again, what's opportunity? Is a prospect that we believe we can close within the next six months. Okay. And you can define what's an opportunity for your company. I think six months makes sense for a startup. More than that, it's too long. And as a startup, we need to, to have cash flow to make money. And if we wait too long, um, then the company might not survive. So six months, I think it's OK. Um, so the group of opportunities, as I said before, is called the pipeline, the, the, the thing I presented before. OK, so the guy, um, I, I sat down with the client. We went through his, the, the questions. Um, we, we got him very excited about using us because he has a problem that we can solve with our solution. We can actually work with them. Um, we tell them, OK, um, listen, um, I think you have an amazing hotel, or you are an amazing client. You have this pain. We can solve it with our solution. The next step, and I tell him what the next step is. The next step is that we run a trial, a trial of 30 days. I don't know if you have a trial on, on your solutions. Is there anyone I have used trials? Okay. Um, we offer them a trial and we tell them that they need to go to the trial. Uh, is it absolutely mandatory that the client needs to go to the trial? Ideally, they wouldn't. Ideally, they would buy it right, right away. But that's not how our real world life works. Um, they need to try our so the solution even if they, they, they think uh, or they trust you during the call. They need to try the solution before making the decision to buy. So, so what we do is uh, we set ex expectations with the client. We tell them, OK, you're going to go through a trial of 30 days. Um, we, we have an account manager who will make the customization in the beginning for you. And during the trial, we'll set uh, down, as it is one month, every, every, every week we call you to see if you are going well, if you are extracting value from the tool, et cetera, et cetera. And I expect one week before the end of the trial, if everything goes smoothly in, and goes well, that uh, I will call you personally and we will close the contract one week before the, 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 the end of the trial. So he already has the expectation that the trial will go manually, will go well, I will call them, and that we will sign the trial in the end of the, we'll sign the contract before the end of the trial, <coughs> okay? So expectation sets, what's the next thing? He signs the trial, we send them a, um, a contract via DocuSign, so DocuSign, PandaDoc, uh, use whatever tool you want, but please don't send uh, scanned papers. We are a startup, so we don't have time to lose to be scanning stuff and sending to clients. Let's use uh, online tools that are easy, really easy to use. I really recommend DocuSign. It costs $120 a, a year. It's, it's cheap and it works perfectly. I, I upload the PDF, which is the contract, with the fields that I need to customize for the client, hotel name, address, blah, 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 the price, and my signature, and that's it. And my team cannot even do it without me being there. Okay, that makes it very simple because the client receives on his on his email uh, a contract from Climber. Uh, here are the conditions. I can go through them with them if he needs. Um, he just needs to click for this signature to be there automatically. Um, so he signs the trial. He starts the trial. He starts the trial. He happens everything that I just said. In one week before we close the contract. So what are we seeing here is, is exactly a process. And because it's a process, it's a funnel. A 
Okay, we have something coming from the top and something going down the bottom. And we need to keep on feeding this, this funnel, this what I call the sales machine, in order to be always a ping up. Okay? Drop it, drop it. <laughs> always drop it. Um, so roughly, if I want to have 10 clients uh, in the end of the first quarter, which means 10 days from now, in the end of March, I need to have run 30 demos, which means that I have 60 guys, hotel, hoteliers, clients signing um, trials. I had to add generate 120 um, opportunities in pipeline, which means that I run, or my team run, 240 demos. Okay, 240 demos, and going back, we need 940, 950 sales qualifying leads. And this is per quarter. What I what we have, this is just a summary of, of what, what, what we do in Climber. We have per quarter, we have something, okay, this is uh, already the, the, the quarter skilled up. What I have is that even per line, I have per month and then per week, okay? <coughs> so far, does it make, does it make sense? Do you think this might be useful? <coughs> you need to have a strategy, a path to achieve your goal. And here's how we do it, okay? Now, this is a picture of, uh, that I took a few days ago for, for what, what, what we have in Climber. This is the, exactly what we just saw before. We have contract sign, trial, 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 <coughs> opportunities, demos run, demos book, sales qualified list, and we have CC, SRT, do we have a pointer? Doesn't work. CC means Claudio Cavalcanti, <coughs> SRT means another account manager. So each line is an account manager for, Clim for Climber, okay? And every single of them, we have account management, we have sales development reps, I will explain the difference in a second. But every every, every single of one of them has, has goals. This is the goal, and here's the result. So in the end of, the, of each week, I can come back to my team and say, you had to book two demos, and you booked two demos. But you had to run two demos, and you run zero. What happened? And because we do it in a weekly basis, actually we do it in a daily basis, this revision, um, it helps us to, to optimize the process right away. Because we identify things that are not working. It might be that uh, uh, Claudia forgot to call the client saying, don't forget we will have a demo happening in 20 minutes. Um, it, it might mean that the, the, the email that we are sending to the client saying, we are meeting two days from now at this time, using GoToMeeting linking, link um, is not properly written or it's missing some information or opportunity to trials. Um, the client is very excited, but he didn't sign yet. It means that uh, we got him very excited, but we forgot to follow up, or the client is uh, having too much in his mind because he's just a busy client and, and he forgot. So because we are all the time identifying these issues, we are able to, to tackle, it, tackle them every, every single uh, moment. So what I recommend is that if you first establish your, your, your path to, to your goal, uh, you define the stages, you, you define what you need to be doing every single week. We can go even to the, to the detail level of, if I need to generate X amount of sales qualified leads per week, then what does it mean in terms of me um, generating, um, um, writing blog posts, or, or something that is generating uh, traffic for my, my page, what does it mean? How many blog posts I need to send per week to have that sales qualified leads so I can get to the numbers of clients until the end of the year? We can do it until that, um, detail level, okay? So we call this scoreboard. Um, it's really, really important for sales teams to have scoreboards in front of them visually because this cannot be just on your Excel spreadsheet. You should have it as a as manager. You should have it. You should, you should control it. You should be looking all the time the conversion ratios, okay? Um, and I forgot to say one, one important thing before here, which is the conversion ratios. From each stage, as I said, we have um, leaks. Leaks? Is it correct? Leaks? Palace? Um, leaks. Leaks. So we have leaks. So in, in the, we, you, when you first uh, um, establish your, your, your pipeline, your this is called the pipeline, or there's other names, um, we know that uh, in average, um, one contract sign means that we had to run three demos, three trials in the past. And this is not so good, which means that we are setting up a, 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 a trial that takes 30 days, and uh, and then we can only close one client out of this three. And this was the beginning, it was still like this, and we are now improving this, this conversions. 
33% roughly. And from trial sign to trial, we have about also 50% of clients that, uh, that sign the trial. And when we generate an opportunity to become a, a trial sign, it's also about 50% of the clients that actually got it, were excited but signed the trial agreement. And you need to figure out what are the conversions for your, for your company. And when you first sign, when you first set up your sales funnel, you don't know the conversions. You might have a, a, a guess, um, a get feeling. A get feeling doesn't work in sales. We need to have a sales pipeline that allow us to do a predictable revenue. And speaking of predictable revenue, there's a really, really, really cool book where I learned all this stuff that is called Predictable Revenue. And Salvador is laughing because I already recommended it to him. So it's called Predictable Revenue, explains all this stuff, how to set up the sales funnels, okay? Predictable revenue. So we got our conversions, we got our scoreboard. This is visually in the office. The, you make your account managers um, go back in the end of the day. If they just uh, hooked another de demo, they go there, they delete the five and they put the six. Okay, I, I, I have another one. And you make them compete against each other. Why? Because it, you need to feed this competition within the sales team. They need to feel that they are compet in, com in competition. They need to feel that there's quotas. Um, otherwise, this doesn't work. What we also write here is the names of the hotels that we work with, the clients, if it makes sense for you. Uh, why? Because it helps. For example, here, here I, have, I see the hotel called Top Gun, and I expect that uh, one week from now, the guy had signed and he, he will appear here. Under, it's on, on Sabine's uh, line. I expect him in one week to be in Sabine's line here. And if it's not, I ask Sabine, where is the, why, why has the Top Gun Hotel started the trial agreement? Ah, uh, because uh, uh, excuses or whatever. Or maybe it was a problem, but we can follow up. So it's, it's, it's easier for us when we saw the names, for, at least for me it's easier when I see the names, because it's, it's easier for me to follow up. Yeah. Any questions so far? Good, so going to, into, into more theoretical stuff, uh, how to run inside sales. Um, I really believe that uh, inside sales can be done from any single place. As, 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 um, you just need to, to have uh, internet connection. It doesn't mean, it, you might be in Burkina Faso, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have a, a headset, a good headset with noise reduction because it's really disturbing for a client when he's talking to you and someone is just talking on your side and can listen to all the conversation. You can listen to all the conversation. So invest on, on, a, on a proper headset, 100,000 euros up, because that pays off, okay? Um, inside sales means basically reaching out uh, to potential, client, potential pro prospects via phone and email. And roughly, uh, I consider that we have three main profiles in the sales team for the sales part. Uh, lead generation, qualification, closing, and support. In the case of Climber, we have Arthur. Arthur makes um, lead generation and qualification, which means that he reach, reaches out to potential prospects that never heard about Climber, or maybe they did, but haven't booked a demo with us yet, or they, they never spoke with us. He is the guy that goes, chase them. Uh, he has his quota per week, 80, 70, 60, um, and he needs to, to reach all, all these his contacts every single week. So he stops here. The, the responsibility of, of, uh, of Arthur is just to collect the contacts and to book the demo. He books the demo, he passes it over to the corresponding account executive. Account executive are also called sales executive. Different names. But account executive is the second role, which is the roles of Claudia and Sabine. Um, they have different markets. So Arthur does it for all Europe, and then if it's for Portugal <coughs> or Spain, it's Claudia, it's for uh, any English speaking uh, region is Sabine. So Sabine and Claudia, they, 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 started, they start here. They have, they, can, they should also book some demos, less than, than Arthur, but the, their real responsibility um, starts on the, on, the, on the demo run. So <coughs> demo run means that uh, Sabine and Claudia are trained uh, to grab on the phone and say, hi, my name is Mario. I'm the sales director of Climber. Uh, my goal here today is to understand uh, how Climber can help you um, on your revenue management needs. Let's start. Um, can you answer these questions? What's your uh, situation right now in revenue management? What's your pain? Um, and then evolve like the 40 minutes conversations and I will give you a script later on. So until, until here, 
Claudia and Sabine, they take it. They, they, they do this part of the funnel from the demo run until trial sign. The client signs a trial. Ideally, we would have in Climber, we don't have that structure yet, but I really recommend you, as soon as you grow, that you segment your sales team to have someone just doing the onboardings. Onboarding is a process that uh, a more technical person will come, uh, knowledgeable on your specific topic, and it's not just sales bullshit, it's specific on the topic, and hands hold the client through the trial. The trial is in 30 days to make sure these guys convert to trials to contract side. And that's also one of the reasons why in Climber we only had 30% conversion from trial to contract because we didn't, we don't have yet a revenue manager, someone really expert on the on the topic, to, to help the client taking the most value out of the tool. We are still figuring out. We are hiring now a revenue manager just to do this part. But as soon as as possible, have it on your team, like segmented in different parts. Again, it's just what someone just doing sales qualified. Um, uh, lead generation and qualification, someone just doing account executives, the, the, the so-called closing, and then the, the support. Everything clear so far? Mm -hmm. How does your team uh, approaches your pipeline? Like, do you um, several ways. It can be on LinkedIn. He looks for, for revenue, manager, you know, revenue manager roles. You can look for a general manager roles, which are the general manager of hotels. Um, we go to trade shows, we collect uh, business cards, we give it to him. Um, some, some leads that arrive on our, on our website and he speaks with them. Um, we, buy, we buy databases of potential clients in different, uh, in different uh, or acquire for free in different, uh, in different uh, countries. For, for example, we go to Germany and we, 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 have, we, we speak with the equivalent to uh, Tourism Portugal there or the hospitality, hospitality association, and we get a list of all the hotels in Germany. And then we just start contacting them one by one. Okay. Good question, so please keep um, on interrupt me if you, have, if you have those questions. Because this is really to help you. If it doesn't help you, there's no point. Um, okay, then, speaking specifically on the outbounds. So as reaching out to a potential client that never had heard about us, for sure, we will not make the first sale on the call right there. That doesn't exist. We need to work them. And as soon as you as you understand how to work your client until he comes out of the funnel perfectly, and in the sales in the, in the shorter uh, sales cycle, sales cycle means the time that goes from the first step until here. What's the sales sales cycle for for your startups? Is it one month? Is it two months? Is it six months? Is it six months? Can we shorten it to be, to be five months? That's your goal as a CEO, as a sales director. You need to shorten your sales sales cycle, sales cycle, yeah. Because again, we need money. You know, otherwise, the company doesn't. Um, to be very honest, for us to set up uh, what we are now doing in, in Climber and it, it works. It's not yet perfectly, but it's worked. The sales machine is working. It took us at least five to six months to set it up because people are humans and we need to learn and, uh, and because there's always be uh, mistakes and there will always be stuff that we don't know and takes time to measure. But it needs to be an iterative process that we are always learning, okay? And always changing every day. Yeah, and yes, as your, as your rule, you need to be looking at the emails that people are sending <coughs> to the script, to the resistance maps, to how they are handling uh, client subtractions, whatever. 1,000 things you need to be looking at. And we will try to cover as many points as, as possible today. Always be relevant. Um, we had this issue in the beginning and it's uh, super normal because uh, we just don't know how to deliver the value of our tool. Uh, or maybe it's, it's not so clear how to deliver value from, tool, from, from our tool. But when I call the client, we need to be relevant on asking the right questions. Okay? Ask specific questions that you, you, you can uh, address later on. Okay? It's completely, completely normal. For those who do, who do a lot of sales over the phone, you, you will get it uh, very quickly. For those that uh, never grab the phone to clack, call the client and never heard about you, it might seem weird, but that's the reality. It might take 10 calls to speak with the DM. DM is decision maker. You always want to speak with decision maker in the company that you are speaking with. You don't want to be, in, our, in, our, in the case of hotels, we don't want to be losing time with the receptionist because it's just a waste of time. We want to speak with the decision maker, the guy that makes the decision whether they can buy or not climber, okay? And that works the same for you. So when I call the hotel, 
I immediately try to pass over the receptionist. If the guy, who's calling? Um, it's Mario. Um, and I, I don't say, hi, I'm Mario, I'm calling from Climber Hotel. Oh, okay, spam. He's, the, the decision maker is busy. I just say, can I speak with, the, with Yogo, Yogo Oliveira? So I'm saying already that I know the guy. That for me, it's so, it's so clear that I want to speak with the, the Oliveira. Don't, don't make me lose my time. <coughs> and the reception says, okay, okay, I'll pass you over. And there's all these techniques that we can use to um, pass the, the, the gatekeeper, okay? Ask for a debrief is really important. What, what is that debrief? Um, good question. So in your case, you normally, the user of your product is the revenue manager, right? But is the revenue manager the ones holding the, the budget to close the deal? Uh, yes or no? Very good question. So in companies, we usually have two profiles, the user and the decision maker. Definitely the guy that makes the decision whether to buy or not is the decision maker, but the one that needs to tell the decision maker, yes, let's use it, this is fantastic, is the user. And in our case, we do have two profiles. We have the revenue manager, which is the one that uses the tool, might uh, be the sales director who uses the tool, it doesn't matter, but he needs to tell the, the director of the hotel, the owner of the hotel, whatever, um, that they want to buy. So you need to understand within your companies, within, within the companies of your clients, who is the person that you need to convince, who is the, the person that needs to pay, okay? That's really, really important, so great question. Are you talk with both on we, the process? We always talk with both, and um, when we book a demo, we specifically say, can we have both in the call, the decision maker and the user? Otherwise, we are making you lose time, and we don't want you to lose time. Okay? Ask for a debrief. <coughs> the client doesn't want to buy from you, you want to sell to him, so he will always put obstructions, okay? It's natural, people don't want to buy, people don't want to spend money. So when he say, no, I'm not interested, or no, it's not a good time, or no, maybe later, or ask a brief, ask why. Like, I always try to understand, and we will see later uh, what you will build when you start asking a lot of, uh, a lot of debriefs. You will build your own resistance map, which is the first step for you to start handling clients' questions and obstructions. Um, I really believe that, uh, yeah. Do you use any uh, sales qualification methodology or? We have our criteria. You need to define your criteria. What is uh, uh, an opportunity? What's, uh, what's the sales qualified lead for you? It might be the software that the client uses. It might be, uh, there, there's four things that are basic. He needs to be the right person to speak with. He needs to have the money. He needs to be the right timing for him. And you need to provide him value, which means that he needs to have a problem that you can solve. Four main things. It's called BANT technique. B-A-N-T, BANT technique. I will speak about it later, but write it down, B-A-N-T. Um, first, the, the, you need, I really believe that you need to create five touch points with the clients. Um, because again, he doesn't buy from you at the first time. If you see him in an event, if you, saw, if you send him an, an email, if you call him, and then you make a demo, in the demo is already the fourth touch point with the client, and then you meet him again. In five, five, five touch points, you are already friends. He knows each other, he, he, know, he, uh, he knows you, and he will not forget. And before having five touch points, it's almost impossible to close a, a, a cell on inside cells. Um, and then there's a, something very, very important that seems banal here, banal, but it's not, which is never give up, never give up on a cell. Never, never, ever in inside cells, a client is considered lost. Even if the guy is pissed off, even if at that time your tool didn't deliver him value, even if it was too costly for him at that moment, doesn't matter. You will go out of the sales cycle and we'll, you'll put him in a nurture program. Nurture program means that you'll start, you'll send him email marketing, you'll have someone speaking with him times to times, two in two months. You can ask him, when would be a better time for you for us to speak again? When will you have a, 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 a budget, budget available? It's very normal that the companies only have the, their budgets is being set up in the end of the year, in November, December. So speak, them, speak with them again in October or in November. Ask them, do you have the money now? Okay, but keep them on the nurturing program, never forget it, okay? And something else is, I don't have the, the picture here, but the, the, the ones that already went to our office, you will see a huge uh, image there saying, um, like statistics on sales, and basically it, the, the fifth line it says something like, uh, you usually need to follow up on 12 times with a client to set up a demo. But we, the ones that never did sales before, when you call and the, the, you were not able to book the demo right, right there with the client, 
and uh, and you see, oh my God, this doesn't work for us. Oh, I screw up again. It's absolutely fine. But keep on calling, keep on calling. Be a pain in the ass. And the more times you call the client, the more times uh, the, ch uh, the more chances you have to book the demo with him after you already uh, ran the demo with him and you identify that he has the, the, the potentiality to become a paying client later on. And, and he didn't sign the trial agreement yet. You need to keep on following up, following up, calling, sending him email again and again and again until he signs the trial. And then he signs the trial, you need to keep on following up, following up, following up, following up, following up until he, he sets the date to start the trial. And the mindset of your salespeople in your organization it needs to be following up, following up, following up, following up, following up, without stopping, following up. Following up is super important, okay? <coughs> I'm not going to be speaking about inbound because uh, we are just setting up this now and I'm not a particular um, expert on it yet. I just want to, um, we are also setting up the marketing engine for the first time now. Um, uh, one, one of the things that I really wanted to stress out here because I think it's important is that uh, for the sales team to work properly, I don't think you as a sales guy um, should be doing all the, the stages, the generation, qualification, closing, and support. No, you should segment. And the, the best way to segment the teams, or like uh, what is usually normal in the industry, is that you have three um, sales ex executives, sales account executives, so the guys that run the demos with the client, um, and their bottleneck is the time that they have to run the demos. So if the demo, like uh, in case of Climber, takes 40 minutes, it's almost impossible that he runs more than 10 demos a week. Because he, after the demos, he needs to go to the CRM, input the data, and he still needs to send uh, some, some, some contracts or some agreements, and he still needs to follow up. So there's no time. Maximum 10 demos per week for this account exec, sales executive. And then you have one SDR. SDR is the sales development rep, the guy that does the first part of the sales funnel, the guy that collects the leads, the guy that sets up the demo, the guy that qualifies. Okay? And then one marketing. If you can have someone in the team that is just sending email marketing, doing SEO, doing webinars, or whatever, all these marketing initiatives. Um, and by the way, we just have it now in Climber, so I'm, I'm not gonna sp sp speak about it so much because I'm still learning. Um, but also, everyone needs to have a quota. Everyone needs to have a quota in your sales team. Quota means goal, something that they need to achieve in the end of the week. Um, and marketing as well. So to evaluate marketeers, for me, what I think it makes sense is if we go back to the sales funnel before, marketing should be evaluated with the number of opportunities that they were they helped to generate. And then, then you say, okay, Mario, but if they are just doing marketing, email marketing or whatever, uh, and they are only generating sales qualified leads or marketing qualified leads, how can they be uh, um, accountable to the opportunities? Because they need to be so relevant in their marketing materials that you will have more and better opportunities. Does it make sense? But how do you measure that? The guy brought you 1,000 marketing qualified leads. Okay, 1,000. He brings you 1,000 marketing qualified leads. And uh, the, your, your account manager goes there and, and runs 1,000 demos and he said, who, who the fuck? Is, is this guy that you just contacted me with? This guy is not relevant at all. He's not qualified. He's not, he's not good for us. He's not integrated with the systems that we can. He doesn't have the money right now. And, and so the marketing is doing a bad job because he's, he's, he's bringing in people to the funnel that we cannot work with. You ask. We can have. We can have. We can have Arthur. We can have Arthur uh, asking a, a simple question, which is: uh, uh, We are working with a hotel, your competitor, um, and they have uh, this amount of, of money, this budget for all kind of tools. Is this similar with what you are you have expected to invest in a similar tool? And they have, uh, Yes. Yes. Uh, no. We're not. We don't have actually the money now. Okay. You put him in a position that you will answer it. You, play, you make him un uncomfortable to tell you that. Okay, I will also not be speaking about pricing because someone will be handling this later.
Okay, guys, as soon as you have your sales pipeline defined, all the stages, all the conversions, uh, and then if I call you in two months and ask you, um, Diogo, how many sales qualified leads, how many leads you need to have to have a paying client? You need to tell me it's one to 20, or it's 5%, or it's 10%, or it's 2%. So in case, in case of Climber, we understood now that we need, uh, we close a client in every single 500 leads that we generate. Okay? So, and you need to have it by heart. Like, you need to have this number on top of your mind all the time. And you need to improve it as well. Um, you also need to, to be, uh, like, uh, what do you say? You need to be on top of the numbers all the time. You need to be very analytical as this sales director position, founder that is in charge of sales. Um, you need to be very analytical. You need to know what is a good conversion ratio, what is an average conversion, conversion ratio, what is a bad conversion ratio. Because when I hire someone, and we just, for example, hired Sabine in September, and if I'm expecting her to close every, three, uh, every month three clients, in the end of, uh, of a quarter, she should have nine, but she only have four, and I can see, okay, is this an average, is this bad, is this, is this good? And then we don't keep this person anymore. Because it's really important in the, in the startup because we don't have that much resources that uh, if someone something is wrong and people might be wrong and most of the times it's wrong, we need to, to kick them out. We need to fire them, fire them fast. Because they're not performing. Because you already have the standards, in it. we already know what, what, what needs to be met and they just didn't do it. And it might just be that they are in a terrible moment of their life or that uh, they are full of excuses, or they are terrible, they don't, have, they don't know how to do the job, or they are, they are in need of training. And you need to identify exactly what, what is in there that you are missing, so you can, you can tackle it. But your role is to identify issues in the sales funnel to tackle them immediately. And for that, you need data. Because those that don't measure, don't improve. You need data to improve, okay? So build, measure, everything, so then you can learn. We spoke about this. Um, it's really important that uh, that uh, whoever is doing sales in your organization, um, not founder, of course, um, should have should have also an incentive. What we call the code um, commissions or bonuses. So what we do in Climber, we have a salary that is fixed, and we have a part of the salary that is related with bonus, with performance. The more they, they perform, the more they they they, they receive. And uh, and needs to be built in a way that if the guy is so so good, the guy, the girl is so good that the more he does, it needs to be expo exponentially in increasing. The more he, he closes, the also more money he makes. Uh, so it's in an incentive him to 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 be a, a dog, to go always for for the extra money. Um, there's a lot of details here that you will receive it on the presentation later, and you can you can check. But I will just not go through all of them now. Um, what's important is that you you have your quotas again. Going back to to climber, you need to have your 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 goals here in a way that uh, you, they they will achieve it in the end of the week. Because if they don't, they will be they will be feeling bad. Uh, they will think that they, they their motivation is going down. They will stress. Um, so it's it's preferable for you to lower a bit the quota and they overachieve it than the, the opposite. Uh, okay. And one question, uh, two separate quotas, uh, like, uh, so how do you do that? Because uh, it depends a lot on uh, the amount of customers you're being able to go on to and so on. Absolutely. So the, what I recommend is that in the beginning the founder does it himself, or if you already have the sales team, the, the sales director does it himself. Because he, he, is, he somehow knows already the processes, so in that specific moment, in the status quo of the organization at this moment, he, he can establish what is an acceptable performance. And if you did the job yourself for one month and you see that uh, you are able to book four demos and run four as well, then you put the level off at four. But then with time, you identify stuff that can be improved and you leave the quota. You cannot be stuck at, the, at that moment, okay? Um, there's a lot of tools that we use to help us on the inside sales. There's basic stuff that you need. Who here is better? Who here doesn't have a CRM? Everyone has a CRM. Thanks, God. 
because <laughs> Lisbon that doesn't happen. Okay, we need to have a, a, a CRM to 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 register everything that is happening with our clients because, and, and I'm glad that everybody uses a CRM or at least everyone is saying that you use. Um, <laughs> doesn't matter which one you use, Salesforce, HubSpot. HubSpot is really cool. There's Pipedrive. Um, HubSpot is for free if you don't have one, and you just sh sh not saying anything right now. Check HubSpot later because HubSpot is is nice. Um, it's you need to, this this place where you can go and uh, I just spoke with a client and I go over there and I register. I spoke with uh, my client X and he just told me to call him back in two weeks so I put a follow up right immediately <coughs> for my email. I received one week later a follow up saying call the client X because he asked to be called in this day. Or I just had the demo and, um, and uh, the client became an opportunity and the opportunity is worth 10,000 euros so I'll go there and generate a deal. An in the deal flow I generate a, an opportunity with 10,000 euros. Or um, I, I just spoke with the client and uh, I need uh, Claudia, my, my account executive, to, to follow up with, with this client. So I put a tag on Claudia so she receives an e email. And there's all this stuff that the CRM allows you to do that is crucial for the growth of your company. I saw a company with 30 year, e years um, in the hospitality sector, 2,000 over clients all over the world, and they, they were using Excel. Please do not use Excel because it's not CRM. <coughs> you need a CRM. And you need a CRM that is connected, okay? Connected with your email, that everything that you send to the client goes there, becomes registered. If I die tomorrow, my account executives, my new founder, that it will replace me, whoever, will see the, the all the, the, the information that uh, that uh, were um, passed be between climber and the client within uh, from the from the from the beginning of our re relationship. And, uh, and I have clients that we exchange 60, 70 emails and calls. And what I also suggest is to use a call center. Call center is this tool that allows you to call. It can be Talkdesk, or it can be Zoiper, or it can be HubSpot uh, sales, um, anything that you might use. Um, that, uh, that registers the number of calls that uh, someone did per day, um, your account executive did per day, that the amount of time that uh, the guys were on the phone, um, if uh, if uh, you call the client and it bounces or it means that you, you were not able to reach him, so you need to reach at least three times this client. So you need to have all these metrics in order to keep improving. It's, again, it's all about the data and measuring the analytics. Okay? We also use uh, tools to send. Uh, um, so I I usually when I send a, a, an email to to a client, say um, I just saw or we spoke in this event or I saw you here or. Um, would you like to run a demo with us? And I'm not going to follow up manually two days or three days from now. I'll just put him in a cadence of emails, a sequence of emails using Mixmax or, or using HubSpot or using any other tool that allows for this um, marketing automation or email automation. So the email goes immediately to him. Because if I have 1,000 clients, if I would have to do it manually, I would have to send at least three follow-ups, which means 3,000 emails. I have more stuff to do, so I'll just put it everything manually on, on the mix now. So that saves a lot of time. Investing in a tool like this is really cheap, it costs $20, um, 20 per month, and saves you a lot of work for you and for your team. And everyone in, in your uh, team should have it, the ones that are reaching out potential time. Can you elaborate on how you use it for this process? Yes. Um, for example, um, I buy a new database of hotels in Austria. And there's 1,000 hotels there. And we called the hotel and we identified the name of the decision maker and the email. So now we have uh, Excel spreadsheet, column A, the, number of, the name of the hotel, column B, the name of the decision maker, column C, the name of the, uh, of the email of the guy. So we have three fields that can be customized. So I write an email saying, hi, name. Um, we are a revenue management system model, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we saw hotel X is uh, more than 50 rooms. Um, so we would love to set up a demo call with you. So I, I write a, an email with three customization lines. just do that for uh, scheduling, not post scheduling, right? It can be for before scheduling the demo, or can be for following up. Okay. And, uh, and it's easy for you to also for the following up from them. 
Absolutely, absolutely, because I know it's all about following up and the clients are busy and the clients didn't see value enough and the clients were not pushed yet to make the decision. So okay, if I, I put them on a loop, like I just put them on the loop and it's automatic. And, so the, and then you say, okay, this guy needs to go to the loop. Eventually after my email sent uh, automatically three emails to the guy saying, um, Salvador, I'm just sending you a friendly reminder. Are we gonna, are you still interested in speaking with us? And I didn't send it, it was just, uh, Automa automatic. And the guys finally replies, yes, my, I was so busy, I was in holidays, or someone just, something just happened. And this is normal life for everyone. They are busy. So you will reply eventually. So your uh, uh, chances of speaking with the guy, contacts and the, and the um, interaction points increase. And that's what you want. We spoke about before not using Skype, using GoToMeeting or Zoom. Or, or Zoom. I really recommend it. Um, and for closing the, the contracts, trial agreements, whatever, uh, not to sign Pandadoc or anything, but don't use paper. We are startups, we are innovative, we need to be, we need to look like innovative, and then and we, actually we need to be innovative. So stop using paper. Uh, Never mind. Five minutes? Yeah. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, there's <coughs> someone also that will be speaking about hiring, so I'll not be speaking about uh, hiring. Um, we already, we already spoke about uh, segmenting the, the sales funnel and having people for different roles. That <coughs> works in sales, that also works in marketing. Uh, this is particularly for the marketing. I'm not gonna be speaking about it because uh, we are also um, only bu building it now in Canada. <coughs> this is very important, On onboarding. When is the time in the company that in the sales funnel that uh, the client signed the trial agreement and he, you set up a date for him to start using your tool as a trial for 30 days or for 15 days or for two months or whatever. Uh, and there's a crucial moment that is the moment of, of the beginning of the, of the onboarding that you need to set up expectations with the client. And trust me, you don't have to have the best tool, the best product, the best service in order to close that client against the competi competi competition. It's all about setting the right expectations for the client and you overachieve them. So if your product is eh, but you set the expectation of the client in a way that uh, this is what, what will happen in the next four weeks, every week will happen this, I hope, I expect you to use our tool, you'll be receiving a call from our account executive every single week. Um, and then during the trial, you would give more than that. You called him twice, he, he was able to in the case, specific case of Climber, he was able to, instead of increasing revenue 5,000 euros, he increased 6,000 6, euros every single week. And, and you told, hey, this was even better than we expected. You are already delivering more, over delivering, right? Yeah. And that's what counts for the client emotionally to say, okay, I want to keep uh, working mm -hmm. with these guys and not with the competition. So trust me, it's not about uh, the, 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 the companies that survive are not necessarily the best product. Most of the times are not the best products or best service. Are the guys that uh, did more following up, uh, set up better expectations. And you, you will get to this conclusion on your own as soon as you build your sales machine and arrive to this moment. Of course you cannot over promise, you need to be always deliver what you promise and try to over, over deliver. Um, not fuck the process, we fuck the process so many times. Uh, because uh, we told the client that uh, the tool was going to work and then it had issues, bugs, and he was logging in the, in the morning and the tool was not working. Climber was not working for the client. So of course, he, we, we were not able to close that client. And we lost a lot of clients in the, in the, until December because <coughs> the, tool, the, the product was just buggy. So you need uh, the sales team to be in constant communication with the product team to, to, to solve it because you need to have a collaboration with the team. So there's one point here, <coughs> Um, that I'll, I'll check in a, in a second, that, uh, that uh, sets the relationship between your, your sales team and the product team. One very important thing, nobody, not, mm, that, that such a thing doesn't exist, nobody buys features, they buy value. And it's all about setting the, the expectations and delivering the value that the client needs, okay? It's, not, it's never sell features, I have feature A, B, or C, or D. No, I solve this problem, I solve this problem, and I'll help you here and here. That's what they, they buy. Um, so we'll, we'll only have one, one minute more, um, so I will not have time to explain it all, but the demo is something that is, a, you have a basic script, you have a basic question, set of questions that you ask. No matter what you're selling, there's three or four main questions <coughs> that you should always ask. 
what's your status right now? Like, what's your current situation? What is the problem that you are facing? Uh, how would you like this problem to be solved? Um, and here's how our solution can help you solving those problems. Okay? These are four basic stuff that you need to, to address during the demo call. And in our case, it takes 40 minutes to get all this stuff done. Okay? So you, to, to, to identify the problems that clients have, you need to ask the right questions. So for your specific product, ask and think and write down what are the specific questions. Over, overcoming resistance, and this is the last thing that I'm going to speak today because I only have uh, 40 seconds, is when we, we are first setting up the sales machine, the client will tell you, I don't want to buy because of this. I don't want to buy because of that. I'm not the decision maker. I'm not the one that makes decisions. I don't have money right now. I don't see value in your tool. Go, competition is bad. Um, this is not right timing. Come back in two, in, two, in two months. So you need to do something like this. In the beginning, when you are setting the sales team, write down in every call that you make. And if you have, if you have three people, each making 100 calls a day, make them register at least 300 data points of what was the obstruction that your client said in that moment. Yeah, Mario, you know, but uh, I saw a tool of the competition and they are easy to use. Okay, product related. Uh, it needs to be, uh, our, our tool is not, is not, is not, is not intuitive. Or uh, he doesn't see value because he, he doesn't have uh, that amount, uh, that such amount of information to make the decision. Or it's not the right timing. Or the price is too, is too low or is too high or you don't have that integration, or blah, blah, blah. There will always be something that they will, uh, they, that they will tell you, and that you should always have an answer ready. So in the beginning, one year ago, we had in front of our salespeople this stuff where every time the client would say something, they would address with the, the answer immediately. The client is never left without an answer. We are always able to, to disconstruct. So I call this the resistance map. Basically, right now, this all summarizes to these four things. Every single client in every single industry in the world uh, will have four main topics that you need to address. The budget, you need to make sure the guy has the money and he's the one who makes the decision, so he has the authority to make the decision. You, you, you need to deliver him value, so if, if your solution cannot really solve him a problem, it's not for him, he's not gonna buy, or he might buy but later he will churn, and then you just lost time with him. Churn means that will not continue as a client after and timing, it needs to be the timing now because the guy is super interested, he's super excited, he has the money, he has the authority, but it's not the right timing because he's just gonna go in all of this, okay? So if he's gonna go in all of this, he's not being able to close in the, within the next six months, it's not an opportunity, therefore you don't wanna invest in your time in him. And basically that's it, there's a few more other things that I wanted to say. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But basically, I think we address the most critical part for me, which which uh, which is the, the step number zero, which is the, the planning, the backward planning, starting from the goal, going back until how much sales qualified leads you need to generate. I wish someone would have told me how to do it and the importance of having done it one year ago or two years ago in the case, because that would have saved me time. From my point, uh, from my perspective, um, if you are here today, you already learned something, and please come back to me uh, if you need help or if you need me to share any other resources, because I will be very happy to share. So thank you so much for your attention.